scholar program and um, getting ready to apply for that. The applications are open. The applications open November 1st and will go through January 15th. So what is the Summer Scholar Program? When you're um, looking for an undergraduate research program, you're looking for opportunities to work among um, top researchers, to get the opportunity to really explore research, to conduct research, and to ex expand um, your, your, your opportunities and such. So the Summer Scholar Program is really um, anchored by three different categories. The first of which is guided research. And um, that research experience, when you apply to the Summer Scholar Program, you're going to talk about some of the projects and labs and areas of interest. And then through a selection process that has multiple stages, um, eventually those that participate in the program are matched and selected by um, finally um, mentors and labs. Coupled with that guided research is also professional development. We want you to be able to explore robotics and AI more broadly. We want you to be able to um, think about other possibilities and just to explore. So there's a lot of skill building that happens within the Summer Scholar Program around exploring robotics, broadening even the context to understand um, through um, conversations with policymakers and, and, and leaders, and also really building some of those core scientific professional skills that you're gonna need to um, be able to communicate some of the skills. And finally, really what is the anchor is, RIS is this community. It is a mentored, nurturing environment and the students that come through the process, um, there are so many successes from it and the backgrounds are really, really broad. So there's three stages to the Summer Scholar Program. There's a free program once the class is selected and we start to engage and we start to prepare for that summer experience, right? We start to um, think about what are the outcomes that you're looking for? What are the outcomes? How are we gonna work together? And then once we dive in, we kick off that summer um, experience June 1st and we start to work with colleagues across the Institute there are so many alumni that are at the Robotics Institute or within the School of Computer Science. You're coming home. You're coming and joining a community um, that has a really a keen sense of what that experience is. So there's also additional tutors and supports to help you develop um, core professional skills. And there's peer mentoring as well. Post program. That's the stage that we're in right now for the 2022 um, scholars. We're continuing to look at admissions. We're thinking about, um, you know, next steps with some of the, the, the research and we're having ongoing conversations as well. As part of the Summer Scholar Program, there are several different um, deliverables. And this is with, when you're thinking about any undergraduate research program, one of the outcomes that you want is you wanna think about how you're, the experience that you're gonna get, and then also what is evidence of your contributions. And so with the Summer Scholar Program, there are three different pieces. One is the Risk Working Papers Journal. So you have a paper that reflects your contributions over the summer working with your mentors in the lab. You will also have a research poster and a summary video. And all three of those elements are created, those deliverables to support you in next step. Now, the Summer Scholar Program, as you see here, we're coming from all over the US and the world. Each year there are between seven and, and 12 or 13 different nationalities that are participating in the program. So the Summer Scholar Program is both for um, US and international students, whether you're studying in the US currently or you're studying um, somewhere abroad. The program has a lot of skill building, exposure to um, different sites and areas. Um, within Pittsburgh and with part of the Robotics Institute is the National Robotics Engineering Center. So we often do site visits and we get to see um, um, some of the larger robots, some of the commercialization. And this is one of our visits here. And on the far right is a RIS alum from 2010 or 2011, who actually works at the National Robotics Engineering Center. So when we enter a lot of the companies, when we go to the labs, a lot of times there are RIS alums that are um, meeting with us. 
as part of the experience as well, we want to think about robotics, AI, but we want to think about STEM more broadly. This was a visit with County Commissioner um, Chip Abramovic, um, where we were coming together and we were talking about pathways and STEM, and he was sharing with us how policy is formed and um, meeting with the scholars to get their input and ideas and, and, and learning about their journeys as well. Each summer as part of the program, we also have opportunities. We're doing a lot of peer engagement, but we're also doing outreach. We're also having the opportunity to share ideas with others and to uh, explore together. This is a, a project that we did with um, younger students on campus that we're visiting as part of a camp. And we'll do lots of different um, outreach and engagement opportunities online and in person as well. At the core of everything you're going to experience with RIS and many of the research programs is that it is a community. And when you're coming in, you're coming to add to that community, to experience research, to contribute, to grow, and you do that together. So the experience as a summer scholar, as I look across here, there are so many different nationalities uh, um, and backgrounds that are um, um, represented here. The summer scholars in 2022, this was our first summer back together in person after two years of being remote. And we um, they were hosting um, specific dinner going to um, and trying different nationality foods and, and, and exploring together across Pittsburgh as they got to discover that. So here's another one of the dinners that was that they hosted. And there's lots of different events as well, because it is about community. It's about getting that balance and really having some fun together, exploring the city. There is so much to do and to to experience and you're building a lifelong network you're really building friendships and and it's it, and it's fantastic because it's others that are also interested in robotics RIS is global and so as part of the summer scholar program we're also connecting to robotics researchers that are coming from all over the world and um, some of those researchers um, were part of robo launch and so we connected with um researchers that were um, doing um, 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 robotics research uh, at the forefront in several different countries and to learn about their research and to learn about different labs and approaches and what some of the things that were exciting them as well. So the RISC 2022 experience really has those three parts, the research experience, the professional development that is both localized within CMU and global as well, um, it has opportunities for you to teach and you to learn um, and to share together. And finally, it's all anchored with the community. Everything has the community at the end. So let's talk a little bit more about why we come together and what the sticking point is as well. Um, there's so many different backgrounds, but the thing that really um, cements us together as a, as a team, as a group, is this um, definite interest in the love of robotics and just wanting to explore and learn more. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes um, talking about preparing a strong application. And when you think about this, um, the, the guidance that I'm going to provide here is for the Summer Scholar Program, but I'm going to generalize it as well. If you're applying for any type of scholarship application, fellowship, um, research experience. There's a couple things that you want to do, and then there's some things that you want to avoid as well. So let's do a quick walkthrough from the Summer Scholar um, website and see how you might enter into that portal and um, what you might see there. So this is the apply page, and um, one approach would be just to dive completely in and to start working on your application. But I'm going to ask you to pause and I'm going to suggest that whenever you're thinking about applying for a scholarship or a research experience, you really want to understand the what are the objectives of the program, what type of profiles are they looking for, and what kinds of experiences are being provided. So let's walk through a little bit. You're going to hinge right on the, um, the application um, portal there. This is where you want to spend the majority of your time. You want to see the research showcase. What is the research showcase? It is the academic journal. It is the research poster and the videos that have been created by the scholars to 
describe, to showcase their research contributions. With any type of undergraduate research experience, like a summer experience, you are looking for opportunities to join research in most cases, and you're going to be adding to that. So what you want to do is really to find out what kind of projects have been happening. The best way to find the type of projects is to go and to view some of the posters, view some of the videos, and then if you find areas that are really exciting to you, go deeper and start to read the papers as well. Who participates in the Summer Scholar Program? Well, when you look at the journals, when you look at the posters and the videos, you're gonna see who the primary um, mentors are. And the mentors could come from many areas across the Institute. And these are some of the mentors that have participated in recent um, uh, years. The best thing that you can do though, is to really look at what were some of the work um, that was done recently? And so that's really the best way to ground and find out, you know, what are those opportunities as well? So this is actually what the portal looks like. What does, um, when you get to go in and you're gonna start the application. So when you're thinking about applying for any type of research experience, the first thing that you wanna do is really explore that environment what kinds of opportunities are there? What were some of the prior projects? And with RIS, we have this organized under a research showcase. So you may not be able to see what are the upcoming projects, but you will be able to see for the past several years. And what you're going to understand from that is that many of these projects are ongoing. Sometimes there are new projects that um, begin. You can also see which faculty members at the Robotics Institute are most likely to participate. In case you have some general questions, we also have a what's called an FAQ or frequently asked questions section on the website as well. You may have some questions about how to write a statement of purpose, um, how to, what kind of, what your, should your resume look like? And there are links to some resources and they have great examples of a resume, great examples of how to write that introductory paragraph, especially for the statement of purpose, um, how to ask for a letter of recommendation. These are questions that um, almost every applicant has as they go through the process. They're thinking about how do I put together a really strong application. And the way that you put together a strong application is first understand the research projects that exist and that you would be able to contribute to. So that's at the top, explore the risk research showcase. Actually, as part of the um, admissions review, we look at that and we ask whether we rate whether or not the um, applicant has um, demonstrates that they've reviewed the research that um, through the, the risk research showcase. Have they taken the time to really look at some of the projects there? Um, from there, your next um, jumping off point is to think about the, the, the different mentors that you might be interested in um, working with. And then once those specifics are together, that's when you really start to craft your statement of purpose and your resume. There are really good examples um, that are on the website. So there's links to examples and such. And we really hope that you're able to, um, to, to, to look at some of those examples and to think about, um, you know, what is it that you want to do? How do you want to, um, you know, participate in the um, Summer Scholar Program? And how do you find that um, the, 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 the projects and that are gonna be of most interest to yourself. So um, I hope this is um, helpful in understanding what are some of the possibilities for the um, Summer Scholar Program. I'm gonna pause for a moment and I'm going to invite questions on um, YouTube and then I'll dive into some of the questions that have already been submitted. So we'll take a one minute, uh, um, break and then we'll dive into some of those questions that you might have.
Okay, so um, we've got questions about um, what is the profile for um, a summer scholar application? So a summer scholar um, will have at least, and this is really covered in the frequently asked questions. So don't be afraid to, to read through that. Um, and find some information. One is that absolutely um, international students can apply. Each year we have students from many different um, um, countries that are participating in the summer scholar program. There's no specific major that um, someone is required to, to have as a background. So we've had people from um, electrical engineering, um, um, statistics, math, computer science, mechanical engineering, lots of different backgrounds there. Um, the summer scholars, you must be either a second or third year, a senior student that will be graduating is not eligible to apply for the summer scholar program. So the profile um, in terms of um, educational attainment is someone who will not have um, graduated by the time the um, program um, begins. We're looking for, and we work with students that are still undergoing um, their, their undergraduate education, and we'll have at least one, if not two semesters um, post risk. So it's a really good question about what is that profile? Um, no, um, restraints on, do you need to be in the US already? Can I be abroad? There's, you know, we work with the applicants from around the world. So that's not a, a barrier there. And the um, backgrounds, you can be from a number of different backgrounds. It's just really showing what is your connection and how you want to contribute to a project and what your preparation is. So um, that's a really good question as well. And, um, in thinking about preparing your application, the best thing that you can do is really to look at the research showcase and understand what are the research programs, projects rather, that you would be adding from. You know, what does that look like? And what is the, the, the range of different skills that they might be looking at? So look at the posters and the videos first and do this over several years. And I would even go, pre-COVID as well, and look at some of those projects there. So I hope this is a helpful, um, short and quick overview of how to apply to the Summer Scholar Program and any other undergraduate research program. It's about understanding the environment, looking at and really focusing on what are the areas of research? Is there a good match for you? Um, and how do you present your profile to the reviewers. From the RIS website, there are links to um, resources, for example, resumes and for getting started with a statement of purpose. There's really some good tips there that you can use for applying to any program. So we wish you the best of luck and we thank you for um, joining us here today. And, um, We'll look forward to continuing the conversation. There will be um, several sessions coming up in which we're going to have um, lab sharing some of the research directly. So thanks for joining today and we'll look forward to talking again soon.